Well, hello, my dear sisters and brothers in Christ, family members of Olo, Our Lady of the Woods, and people of goodwill. This is the weekly address as I get ready to go to our family of parishes meetings with our Archbishop, the Bishop, other officials of the Curia, and other priests of the Southern region. Um, I'll keep you in prayer. You pray for me. So I wanted to get this uh, dress finished uh, before I leave right now. Today is the feast on May 24th of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of the Church, actually Memorial, the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of the Church. Pope Francis formally integrated it into the Church's calendar in 2018. So it's a little different because it's Mary's motherhood of the Church rather than her motherhood of God, which we celebrate January 1st. But I like what St. Augustine wrote, to kind of give us that flavor and tone of Mary, Mother of the Church. This is what St. Augustine proclaimed. What God has bestowed on Mary in the flesh, he has bestowed on the Church in the Spirit. Mary gave birth to the One, and the Church gives birth to the Many, who through the One become One. And so take a moment maybe and ponder that for deep reflection, and we'll just have a prayer as we ask Mary's intercession, Virgin Mary, Mother of the Church, you are the fairest daughter of Israel, chosen and prepared by God as the sacred vessel to replace Mother Synagogue with Mother Church. Eve approaches you like mother to daughter, old Eve to new Eve, two mothers of souls both on earth and in heaven. And we ask your intercession. Amen. So, this last weekend we celebrated our birthday, the birthday of the church, Pentecost, and I um, had shared with a few people a prayer for Pentecost by Sister Joan Chittister, and I hope that as you were either at the Mass, um, that you were um, somehow participating, either live streaming or there in person, that you really do kind of encompass in your faith life the Holy Spirit every day, not just simply at the Feast of Pentecost, not just simply a confirmation. And so Sister Joan Chittister wrote a beautiful, what I kind of call a poem, it's a prayer for Pentecost. May the gifts of the Holy Spirit bring fire to the earth so that the presence of God may be seen in a new light, in new places, in new ways. May our own hearts burst into flame so that no obstacle, no matter how great, ever obstructs the message of God within each of us. May we come to trust the word of God in our heart, to speak it with courage, to follow it faithfully, and to fan it to flame in others. May the Jesus who filled women with his Holy Spirit fill the world and the church with new respect for women's power and presence. Give me, great God, a sense of the breath of spirit within me. And then take a moment in your own heart to state your own intention and allow the Holy Spirit to breathe in and through you. Amen. So as you heard at the beginning, I'll be going today and tomorrow. Uh, we're meeting with the Archbishop, Bishop Battersby, officials of the Curia, and other priests of the southern region of the Archdiocese of Detroit, um, with the meetings focused around families of parishes. So please pray for us, ask the Spirit's intercession. This coming Tuesday, tomorrow evening at 7 p.m., we have the Pastoral Parish Council. Again, any concerns, any remarks, please look in the bulletin. You'll see who the Pastoral Council members are, and you can always contact them or me. This week, we will uh, finish discussing the protocols. I've gotten a few remarks from some of you with some emails, um, and we will work that out so that this coming weekend, the Feast of the Most Holy uh, Trinity, we will then announce this coming weekend, uh, May 29th and 30th, about um, that whole area of, you know, how we're going to begin the protocol. Because there's all kinds of opinions, there's been all kinds of announcements, dioceses are doing it differently, parishes are in their different ways. As Archbishop Vigneron wrote, and I quoted it on the weekend, we need to have heroic patience. So just have heroic patience. I've had people already in a little tizzy. Come on, just have heroic patience. And patience is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. So if you claim you follow Christ, if you claim you're a Catholic, allow that fruit of the Spirit called patience. So this coming weekend, May 29th and May 30th, we will 
um, announce what we will be doing initially. And then it won't be all of a sudden. We're not going to change everything back immediately. So we'll take the summer and as the state continues to announce things, as things start to happen, I hear, you know, June 1st and then July 1st, we'll keep moving in that pattern. It's all about safety. It's all about, sometimes people have this attitude that they know best. For them, you have to understand, I have to look at the whole picture, not just you, not just your circumstance, not just your opinion, but we have to look at what is best for our whole community. So keep that in mind, and I hope you will practice heroic patience. Um, I was reminded just now that because I'll be gone, and tomorrow we have to be there by 9.45, uh, Tuesday, May 25th, there will be no Mass here at Our Lady of the Woods tomorrow, Tuesday, May 25th at 9 a.m. Um, I have to be out at Our Lady of Good Counsel for 9.45, and I'm sorry about that, but um, that's how it works. But we will then resume the Masses on Thursday, May 27th, and continue as usual. Okay, I'm finishing up the confirmation interviews this week. As you know, our confirmation will be June 5th with Bishop Hanson at 1 p.m. So there's 13 of our young men and young women and then two candidates from other parishes. So please pray for them. Uh, we want to remember all of you in um, our thoughts and our prayers and in our heart. And I hope that you have a very blessed and wonderful week. Um, let's just continue as we celebrate it. You know, let the Holy Spirit come. Welcome the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, we welcome you. And so, of course, I got to close with a final moment of a little, you know, maybe just a little humor, maybe just a very little. This is from a comic strip called Prayer Pups by Jeffrey Smith. So the, the one little creatures going. I've been thinking about the fruits of the Spirit Khan talked about yesterday. God really take that up a notch if he used some fusion. And the little poodle dog says, God doesn't need any of your advice. And the other little one says, but it's the biggest thing in product branding now. You mix two tastes together. It's just like a mashup, but with flavors. Uh, Nim, you don't understand. And Nim looks something like fruit of the spirit mango blast. So in what way do we allow the fruits of the spirit in our lives, especially heroic patience, as we get into re, you know, uh, entering into a less protocoled, you know, face mask and social distancing, but do we allow those fruits of the spirit? And don't forget that the spirit will sometimes have a mashup, but with flavors. Have a beautiful week. God bless.